welcome to the Empire. It's the Eskimo Empire Podcast. This is Trevor Harris. Hey, how you doing? This is number 58, Travis Bond. This is Christoph Malamba Chimanga. Hey there, this is your co-host, Kenny Stafford. Hey, this is Ryan King. And Calvin McCarty. And you are listening to... You're listening to the Eskimos Empire... You're listening to the Eskimo Empire Podcast. The Eskimo Empire Podcast. Hope you guys enjoy listening. Welcome back to the Turf District... It, we are back here again for another Eskimo Empire podcast brought to you by our title sponsor, United Construction Company. Check out all the great builds they do at unitedconstruction.ca. And of course, while you're online, you might as well check out all of our links and social media at eskempire.ca. I'm Andrew, and joining me as he usually does, it is the one and only super fan, Mike. Hey there. Hi there. How you doing, man? Uh, good, good weekend. Oh, a lovely weekend. Yeah. Anytime yes. you can surround yourself with uh, alcohol and football, it's got to be a good that thing, was, right? That was outstanding. My whole Saturday, I mean, it started with a five kilometer walk with my nine year old. Excellent. Who, at two and a half kilometers, said it'll be done. Close. And he made it, though. He got to the end. Did he keep saying it for the last two and a half kilometers? Absolutely. Nice. And then he probably ate about 15 sausages when we got to the end, because <laughs> nice. sausages are the greatest thing ever. They really are. Absolutely. And then came home, got to dressed, and then came to met, meet you. Alumni some, Wine uh, Fest. Wine Fest. Um, what was your favorite? Uh, there's quite a few. I like the, there was an Italian Aspassione or Aspassione. Look at you. I don't know. They said it was a pizza wine. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, I like pizza. Auntie Paddles is excited about you just saying that. Yeah, <laughs> <I'm> sure. <laughs> That's good. Or she'll correct me. And, Probably. Or both. Maybe. Yeah. Yep. How very exciting. It was wrong, by the way. Exactly, yes. Uh, I liked Hope's End, which sounds like I have other problems, but it was <laughs> yes. very tasty. Um, and then... Uh, the I can't Umberto. Remember. Oh, the Umberto. Yeah, that was like really full and yeah. it was great. Yeah. If people haven't gone, you should definitely check it out next May, early May, like Absolutely. April. Usually it's the first weekend in May. Yeah. And uh, But I mean, the number of alumni that are there. I mean, we got Tons. a chance to have a great conversation with Andrew Jones and Justin Sorensen. Right. Uh, Tom Richards, of course, being there, and Dan um, McKinnon, yep, and Blake Dermott, yep. Uh, so and and of course uh, Graham yeah, Graham Bell, Bell that was on the show, yeah. Yep. So uh, and Cabongo actually he came over and yeah. chatted with me for a bit. So uh, he's, he's bigger than ever. I know <laughs> you can still push guys over. Yeah, like holy man, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun time. And yeah. then, uh, and then I left there, raced home, uh, to have, uh, apple pancakes for Riley's 12th birthday party. Fantastic. Mm, That's exciting. Very fun. Yeah. He got his new wheels. So we went for a ride yesterday. And, Excellent. Oh yeah. It's, it's great. He's got those, he's got the, like 26 inch rims now, so I, he Ooh. can keep up if I really. Spinners? No. No. No, uh, no spinners. Maybe next year. On a bike? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. He'd probably like that. I, I, should, I nearly need to be careful about what I say. <laughs> More but, like what I say. <laughs> exactly. But right. uh, no, great weekend. Absolutely. Um, now, even better for tonight, though. Yes. Yes. Because not only do we get to talk some football, but we, uh, we have some returning guests uh, who are back in the Turf District. Uh, I believe it's been a couple of years since we've had almost two, right? Because it was 2017 yes. when we had you on last. Yes. And uh, so welcome back, Quentin and Sam Eberts. Thank you. Thank you for Thank having you. us, Ryan. Glad to be back. Absolutely. Now, we, uh, I guess, I guess the first thing I should ask is how's the business season been for you? How's the off season going? Or, and it's, and uh, does it seem longer? Has it been okay? Or It does seem longer this year for some reason. I'm not sure. I think the weather has a lot to do with that, but uh, it seems like it's it's gone by slow. And, you know, we had free Podcaster agency. Ryan would say it's because we missed the playoffs. I was going to say, yeah. uh, two weeks early. We're missing some football there yeah. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's three like weeks early. Come yeah. on, yeah. three <laughs> weeks early. Year. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah I, I know it did really seemed to drag, but I mean, there was lots of news in January, and I was all excited, and then all this CBA stuff started. And it's like, no yeah. but then February the draft, I guess. Yeah, or the draft, the uh, free agency, the free season? agency. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, that was busy. That yeah. was that was good. That was a positive time. Yeah. Yes. Hey, any the of best those, of times is the worst. Any of, of those guys want to come on? <laughs> now's the time. Yes. Let's get this going. Um, yeah, it's been it's been good. Um, now, since we had you here last, uh, you've added to your family. 
Uh, so, Sam, we're going to excuse you for being tired and, <laughs> and uh, snickering and yawning, and that's okay. We're, to be fair, we all do it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's. I mean, seven months old. There's. Uh, it's. It's busy. Yes. Seven and and four or seven and three right now. Uh, Tennyson's four. Okay, just turned four in April. So and April's he a good month. Is busy. <laughs> I was going to say. So that is a lot of. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. a lot of running around. Yeah. It is. Yes. I, I know. It, I, I can appreciate that on a number <laughs> of levels. Yeah. Uh, same spread with all of mine, that three-year spread. So I, mm-hmm. I get it. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, it's not easy, but we, we'll we'll excuse you for that. All right. You're, you're you. allowed. <laughs> uh, I am impressed you still came and are upright. Yes. That's, that's, that's our first Recording step. isn't over, but <laughs> it's <a good> <laughs> <laughs> the, the mic points down. If you yeah. Need <laughs> it's, uh, it's fine. Um, now... What did you guys think of some of the Esk's moves in the off season? Um, obviously, the big trade over with uh, with Riley moving on. But uh, what do you think about some of the additions and things? You know, I think as an overall, you know, to take a sort of a high level view of it, I think it was certainly some more positives than negatives. I think, yeah, uh, you, you look at the depth, especially on defense. You know, I think our linebacker core uh, improved immensely. <laughs> Uh, D line is solid. Um, you know, I think we're going to have a really aggressive defense, which is going to help. Sure. You know, we're not going to have to we're not going to have to rely on putting up thirty five or forty points a game to to win. I think you know, with the with the changes they made. So I I'm looking forward to it. And I, from the quarterback position, I think you know you can argue that we went from a one to a one A or one B type of thing. It's not like we settled for the the sixth or seventh best option out there. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So, very true. Yeah. yeah. So I think that was you know reassuring from that standpoint. And uh, so no, we're looking forward to it. I think. It's going to be a good year for us. Yeah, I think I think it'll be a different look. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm excited to see these guys on the field together and see how they gel and how they because we know they have some great talents, but can they all for sure work together? I think that'll be kind of. Interesting. Did you have a favorite player that we've added to the team over the last offseason? Uh, that's a good or question. One you're most excited to see, maybe. The one that surprised me the most that I actually, you know, thinking back on looking back at it now, even to today, is uh, Devarius Daniels. I think that was, mm-hmm. a, oh, nice. I think that was a big signing. I think that guy is just, uh, you know, I think he's 25 or 26 years old. Yeah. I think he's just rounding into form and, and he put up some big numbers in Calgary. So I think, I think that's going to be, uh, you know, from an inside receiver position, I think it's, it's, it's going to be solid. I, I'm excited about that. Awesome. Yeah. Sam, was there one that you were like, wow, or no? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Sam, Sam's got a weekend at Bernie's thing going on. <laughs> at this point in my life, if it's not on Paw Patrol or Bubble Duckies, I'm a little behind. So, well, I guess we know where we have to tell Larry well, Dean to go. I gotta so we get some attention. Chase Marshall and Larry Dean. <laughs> <laughs> <It'd be> perfect. <laughs> That's, I'd watch that again. I, yeah, I would. Watch, I'd have to. Uh, but you'd, yeah. yeah, you'd have it on DVD. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my goodness! Now, uh, big one for you guys because I remember mm-hmm. when you were here last, you were talking about how uh, Fred Stamps was part of, I believe, your engagement. Yes, is that what that was? Twenty eleven. Yes. And of course, now he's coming back to uh, retire as an Eskimo and and be honored at the at the home opener. Mm-hmm. How are you guys feeling about that? And and I hope you guys get a chance to actually see him. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah, we're trying to make that happen. Obviously, if we could connect again with Fred, that'd be great. You know, I think kudos for the organization to making that happen because I think mm-hmm. that doesn't happen all the time. And uh, to see him come back and retire as an Eskimo is, I mean, it just it just seems right. And yes. I think it's something that he wanted to do as well. So, for sure. Um, you know, the CFL is a league where, you know, you, you get to know some of these guys and they're here for five or six years and then they go back to the States and you never hear from them again yeah. or see them again. And to, so to have somebody like that come back and, and obviously he's played a, a big role in, with Sam and I. So it's uh, hopefully we get a, a chance to connect with them. That'd be great. Awesome! Yeah, yeah that, that I'm I'm pretty excited about that. Mm-hmm. I, we uh, th- it has actually been tossed around that we may have to postpone West of Us for the home opener solely that's just true. for Fred Stamps and Tom Cochran. I mean, Ryder. That's, uh, yeah, that's yeah, a pretty that's, big that's opening a, day. Pretty absolutely, pretty, pretty big halftime. They're they're really pulling people from West of Us. Yeah, mainly yeah. the people who run it. So we'll have to see how that goes. <laughs> uh, but that's pretty cool. They'll be no. fine without us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, probably. Yeah. 
now let's get into the the main reason that I, I wanted you guys here because um, and, and this kind of goes back to what I was saying about how you've had so many things happen with with football in and around your your lives um, but a few weeks ago you guys launched the initiative uh, pay it forward with football and uh, I want you to give us a, a bit of the backstory and what it's all about and 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 kind of what you're what you're planning on doing for this season Sure. Yeah. No, it's something that we're super excited about. Uh, we've sort of been talking about it for the last while, I would say, a few weeks for sure, uh, if not longer. Football's a thing for me that's been a part of my life since I can remember. I, you know, I remember being eight years old, sitting in the knot hole gang. You know, yep. the game would end. I would run on the field trying to get Gizmo and Tracy Ham and, and get uh, and get an autograph or get a get right. a wristband or something like that. And uh, so, growing up with that was a big part of that. And then after meeting Sam. Um, you know, going to games, uh, obviously getting engaged on the field, and and we were able to announce uh, the pregnancy of both of our kids at at Commonwealth Stadium. That's awesome. Uh, awesome. Things like that. So we, we, you know, outside the wins and losses, we have a, a really strong personal connection to the team and the stadium and the game. Right. So you know, just talking about it, I think we we needed to find a way to sort of pay that back mm -hmm. and uh, not only just to the game but also if we could find a way to sort of couple that up with giving back to the community as well um so that's how pay it forward with football uh came came to be and so um we're we want to send somebody to every single home game this year and um how, how we do that is through nominations so people can nominate people who they feel should get a chance to go to a game right mm -hmm. and it's We've sort of left it very wide open as to what those reasons are, and they can be very personal to the people mm -hmm. involved. And and uh, we're just asking them to share that with us, so we can we can pass it on to some people who would like to go to a game and to experience, you know, some of the things that we've got to experience over the course of our lives. Right. So that's awesome. sort of how that came to be. Awesome. And mm -hmm. these aren't just like, um, uh, you know end zone seats you're talking about <laughs> yeah. no. like uh the, these are these are pretty decent seats where you've got these people sitting to experience this game yeah, yeah absolutely yeah so they're the, the tickets are in section j2 and uh so they're about the 25 yard line on the west side mm -hmm. yeah. and uh west right side. on the aisle so yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, yeah so they're going to be they're going to be good seats the other thing that we want to mention we actually just r announced this today is that we're also going to be including a gift card for the concession for each game. So oh, if someone wants fantastic. to grab a, nice. grab a burger or a pop or a beer or whatever they want to do, they can do that as well. Just to sort of, we want people to just come and enjoy the game, not have to worry about anything. Full right? experience. So, full experience, absolutely. Oh, right? that's, so, that so we're going to be doing that as well. So Excellent. Well, and mm -hmm. and I hope that uh, whoever goes knows they can always come by the tailgate and we'll show them what the uh, what the intro to football is that doesn't cost them anything either they for can sure come over and yep. and uh, be part of the gang and and meet up at west of us watch some uh, tv they can watch an old game get some food hang out i mean that's uh, I, it's all i mean i'm finding that that's what the the football game day experience is now it's not just the game it's right. it's everything surrounding it and, and being around all these people that we know and love football together and that's that's part of it right so um that, that's that sounds awesome like to get the whole experience is fantastic yeah and you guys said earlier that the response has been really good so far it has been phenomenal it's been you know some that we've got we've received some nominations already for the obviously the first games coming up on the 26th and um yeah hopefully and uh, <laughs> so but yeah it's been the response has been great i mean some of the some of the nominations we've received has been has been uh has been awesome and that's exactly what we want we want a lot sure. of good stories out there and and reasons why they want to send somebody to a game so we're, we're excited about it yeah. awesome so now how does somebody get nominated then how do they get in touch with you guys to do that so right now it's on Facebook. Uh, so it's Pay It Forward with Football. It's a separate Facebook page that they can go on, and uh, you, you nominate somebody on the um, on the actual message uh, button. So you need to send us a direct message. We have some people that have been posting on our wall, which is great. But sometimes things like that get overlooked, and we just want to make sure that we don't miss anything. Yeah. Uh, so they can go on that uh, again. Just nominate whoever they want for whatever reason. Just tell us a good story of of why they're nominating that person. And uh, the deadline for the first game is going to be May the nineteenth. Okay, so you need to get your nominations in by then, sure. and then we're going to we're going to select the winner and get in contact with them and let them know that they're going to the game on the twenty sixth. Awesome. So we, so yeah, well, this one this one will come out about the eighth. So that still gives about ten days for right. people to uh, to get in some nominations, and and then you can pick from there. And then is it always going to be the week before that you pick? Kind of idea. Correct. Yeah. So another question that we've received is, well, what happens if we nominate somebody and then they don't get picked? 
they're going to go into a pool. So if you nominate somebody once, that's going to go into a pool for the entire season. So oh, just okay. because so they're not picked for that, over. it carries over, right? right. Okay. So, um, so you don't have to worry about okay, I nominated somebody for this game and they didn't get picked, so they're not going to get picked for the whole year. That's not the case, right? So right. Um, we want people to to do it throughout the year, but there's going to be deadlines a, a week before, right? Every so game you, you for that get, particular uh, game, yeah, you get so many kind of in the pot, and right. the pot grows throughout the year, and then you pick out of those kind Correct. of idea. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that that is that is fantastic. Um, well, I would like to uh, offer on our side for the for the winners for the for the first home game or the like the initial home game that we'll uh, we'll give you guys some shirts to give to those two people. Oh, that would well. be fantastic! Awesome. Absolutely great. Um, that, I mean, if they're going to go to a game, they might as well have a Quaker shirt. I mean, for seriously, sure. well, you yeah. might as well be ready to cheer for somebody, here. right? Yep. So, uh, so we will give you guys those uh, when we get closer to that game. So sure. that way, then they they got what size. Uh, yeah, we got to figure out sizes <laughs> for sure. But uh, we'll make sure that we get those to you guys so that they can have that for that uh, that game as well that would be it's fantastic awesome. we really yeah. appreciate that That's yeah great. we'll try and find ways throughout the season i think mm-hmm. where we can kind of because I, I know mike and i yeah, as soon as we heard about this it was like how what what what, what can we do <laughs> to yeah. be part of it um because uh, i i love everything about it as as we have said many times football also obviously has made a pretty big impact on our lives this mm-hmm. week sit in this room and yeah, uh, you know so um, yeah if there's anything that we can do to, to make that better whether it's uh, tailgates or, or shirts or things I'm just we're, talking we're about it and do that and the- as yeah. it goes on, too. sure. No, that'd be great. We appreciate it. And all, all the support is is mm-hmm. is much appreciated. It's been it's like it, it's been overwhelming uh, the support that we've received so far. And it's, we're only a couple of weeks into it, right? So it's uh, we don't know where it's going to go, but we were talking about it on the way over here. And it's I feel like we're building a house with no roof, right? And we're in, <laughs> we're intentionally not putting a roof on it because we don't want it. I mean, we're we're going to keep giving back as long as we're able to. Oh, uh, that's, yeah, so it's not going to be just this year. It's going to be as long as we can, right? So that's sort of where, where we are at with it. Oh, that's right? Yeah, and that's we want to awesome. make sure we reach people outside of our circle. Sure. Right? Yeah, of so the more people share our page and, you know, talk about it, then we can reach people that maybe don't even really know what football is. That's even better, right? Because yeah. you're introducing people sometimes to the live experience, even maybe the game itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Uh, can I, I got to tell you both, you, both of your videos that you put up, yes. your individual videos were amazing. Like <laughs> I, I was getting a little choked, like this mm-hmm. is awesome. Yeah. Like I just was, I really liked that. So, um, and I, I did see people were sharing that out and, and trying to get people involved. So um, I'm hoping that we can, we can help you with that. But it, it's, it's an awesome initiative, and awesome. we'll we'll go through all uh, how to contact again at the end, so people know how to how to get in touch with you. Sure, guys. that'd so. be great. All right, let's talk. Uh, let's talk about some Esks news, shall we? Yeah, um, there's been some. There has been some. Now let's start with the draft uh, that happened last Thursday night. Now Kayla and I were on hand uh, as the Esks were, uh, you know gracious enough to let us join in again for the uh, for the media side of things uh so it's kind of nice we actually had to hang out with dave and morley and jerry and and uh avery and has, i think it's mike is who he's with I yep. can't remember. and um i just met him for the first time and kind of hung out and watched and made comments about all the different draft picks both for us and for other teams um but the cool thing was is that we were able to talk to Brock and Jason as well, um, and we got to talk to uh, one of the draft picks. So we're uh, we'll we'll fit those in in a little bit here. But um, one thing I wanted to ask you guys because Argos picked first overall, mm-hmm. uh, they actually had a watch party for the draft. Um, if the Esks ever did that, would you go to something like that? Like would you, like. I don't know how many people are that attached to the draft, especially if you're picking a little bit farther down. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's a good idea. Anytime you can bring people and get them excited about football, it's been an off season, right? So, oh sure, yeah, it's kind of ramping up for the season, and I, I think it'd be a lot of fun. It's a chance to, again, like the alumni wine tasting. I guess it's another reason just to be around it. Get together, yeah. have some fun, talk some football, and, and maybe talk about the draft. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was interesting to watch anyway. But uh, and I think um, I think Hamilton had a draft party too, if I remember Could have been. correctly. Um, but uh, but it, I mean, uh, it was cool just listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had the TV on. We're like, okay, who's who's picked next? Great. Okay, let's let's find out who that guy is. That's great. Um, I I like that. Going to the draft or going to a draft party, you you tend to get a little more invested in who are these guys yeah. um, a little bit more beforehand and a little 
after I found because you wanted to be prepared of who who are we actually going to pick. Mm-hmm. But then once the picks are made, you're like, okay, I know this guy, but now I don't know this guy, so I want to find out a little bit more about him. So right. so that was kind of cool. Um, so the Esks had eight picks overall. Uh, round one, which was third overall, uh, they picked defensive lineman Matthew Betts, uh, 6'3", 250 pounds, uh, two-time Vanier Cup champion. Um, he won, like, the... the the, oh, I forget what it's called, the J.P. Metris Trophy yes. three times. So that's yep. like the defensive um, MVP. Right. Um, and uh, and he's, I mean, he's pretty amazing. Um, he did get an invite to a Chicago Bears camp. And that's what I was just going to say. Now, we might have to wait <laughs> for him. Um, he is. He was signed as an undrafted free agent to yep. the Bears. Um, now, will it be worth it? if he ends up back here anyway, at which at some point he may. Like we have with the guy this year. Yeah. Javon Smith. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he, t- he might turn out okay. So, I, I talked about it yeah. with uh, a few people. Uh, it was actually a discussion on esksfans.com. Uh, Paul Reckner, who people that w- mm-hmm. follow the show will know Paul. Jimmy Gaines. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, would you rather have somebody like a Nate Bahar who spends a couple of years sort of rounding into form, possibly, then leaving? Right. Or would you rather have someone who's going to round into form and we still own his rights? So when he decide if he comes to the CFL, he's got a couple of years experience, but we still own his rights. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And, and the other part of it was is I don't know that we needed immediate help no. with that third overall yeah. pick. Like for it, sure, we we're, we we've got great depth. Yeah, we weren't looking for that guy that had to jump into the lineup right now. Um, so, I mean, if we needed that, you'd probably think we'd probably more likely go to offensive line or, or right. one of the high receivers. But we we really didn't need that. So it's it's okay to take a flyer on a guy that right. that Moss actually called transcendent. It's um, a good word. So I'm like, ooh, all right. So uh, maybe hey, now this is fun. We're going to see if this works. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's hear what Brock had to say about bets, shall we? Everything. Pass rusher, pure football player. The analogy we use to describe him is he's a Canadian John Chick in his prime. Mm-hmm. So he's the highest player on our board. And, you know, we understand there's a little bit of risk because the NFL, but he wasn't drafted. So that changes things. You know, there's no guarantee he'll be here, but a little bit less of a chance that he sticks for longer because he wasn't a draft pick. How comfortable are you with the depth, obviously, being that you have to wait for him, but how comfortable are you with the depth, being that you have Kwaku as a starter and specifically the depth behind him? Well, if Betts is here, we feel really good about it. But we have some (laughs) other guys that we think can play. I mean, Mackey's a guy that can go inside and outside, very productive on the interior last year. We signed Andrew Marshall. He's primarily a special teams guy, but he can play defensive end. And then we have our draft pick from last year that from Acadia that you know we think that arrow's up on him as well. Big so now. big now. There's some guys there, and we're confident in them. But overall, you know, our philosophy, my philosophy, is you take the best player available. Look, if he's a fifth round pick, we're not taking him at number three as an undrafted free agent. We're rolling the roll of dice a little bit for how talented he is. You've done okay in that fifth round. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't right now. <laughs> uh, just talk about his skill set. Like, what makes him so good? Uh, the first thing is his quickness off the ball. He wins a lot of matches right off the snap. Uh, he's got a high, high motor. Uh, he's relentless, and he's got a skill set and a repertoire of pass rush moves. He can use speed to power. He can spin. Like I said, he can win off the ball. Uh, we call it boring the corner, where you dip your shoulder, you lean, and you close on the quarterback. And it wasn't just at the U Sport level when he was down in the All Star games in the U.S. He was beaten pretty good American tackles down there too so we certainly think his game translates to the CFL. Was he the guy that you wanted? Was there a little sense of relief when he didn't go at number two? We were ready. We had you know pick a number three. We we had a, a list of we had two players that were targeting. I won't see who the other guy is but he was he was the number one guy on our board so when you get the number one player in the draft in your opinion at number three you take it. Cool. That is cool. That is cool. Yeah I, I, liked, I liked what he said uh, that he was just you know um, he's the best guy. Like, if you get a chance to take him, you, you just take him. The bets player available? The bet. <laughs> <laughs> or as the Esks say, I like 
uh, I like Matt Betts, and I will not lie. That's <laughs> yeah, let's go was. with that. Yeah, yeah and I like that one too. Uh, I heard from Jason right after too. He had the much the same type of praise to, to talk about uh, Betts. I mean, just like Brock said about everything. I mean, he was the number one guy on our board. Um, all the film study that we did on him, he's powerful. He's speed to power. He gets around the edge. He gets to the quarterback. He's athletic. Um, there's a lot of special qualities about him. Um, I, I don't think there's anything not to like about the guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you may have to wait for him for a bit. Um, you know, that's always a risk. But tell me about, uh, obviously you have Bo Tang as your starter. And tell me how comfortable you are with the depth behind him that you, you, know, you can afford to wait. Yeah, I mean, last year Mark Mackey came in and he made plays for us. And he plays inside, he plays outside. You know, we signed Andrew Marshall as a CFL vet who's, you know, been a guy on special teams but he's also when he's ever had to play he's been able to do it so in Gab Bagnell we we drafted last year so the draft's not over either so mm-hmm. you know you're looking at that but uh Kwaku's had a you know a, a done a good job in his career staying healthy as well and you know at the end of the day you're looking for depth and we're hoping Betts comes here at some point mm-hmm. we realize there is a risk that he may not show up this year but um, if he does we've, we've got the two guys uh that you're targeting you feel your Canadian content is as, as good as it is you can take not a chance, but you can take the risk that you have to wait for him? Yeah, and I think what we have is we have racial flexibility on our team. We can start a number of Canadians in a number of different spots. So it depends on kind of how we want to play it out and how the rest of this draft plays out. But I think anytime you're looking at a player of Betts' uh, caliber at the three spot, you know, available to you, and you feel like you can wait. I think you have to take it. I mean, uh, he's a he's a transcendent player. Uh, you don't see those guys every year. So, you know, I think the way our roster shakes out, like I said, just with the fact that we can play Canadians in different spots, I think you go ahead and, and, and wait. Does that cause a lot of conversation over there when your pick comes up? Because you know you can do this or you can do that, and if this guy's available, we can do that. Yeah, I mean, we we went through a ton, a ton of different scenarios. We had the third pick, so there could have been a lot of different uh, scenarios that happened before us. You know, so um, you know, but once those other two picks were made, we felt very confident. I I don't think there was much hesitation at all uh, to take him. So. You know, he's like I said. When you get him here, I think he'll. We'll all realize what we got. But uh, in the meantime, you know, we're happy where we are as a team, and we're just looking to get stronger as the draft goes on. Awesome. So that one's great. But uh, yeah, it's it's nice. For, I mean, not that I didn't think that they both wouldn't like him, but <laughs> some, <laughs> some pretty big uh, some pretty big words when they talk about transcendent and and getting around the corner and and coming is coming that fast as he does I, I went back and watched some of the tape on him and they aren't kidding yeah holy man is that guy quick well there's a reason he got the invite to the bears camp yeah wow now mm-hmm. in the states he's probably looking more as a linebacker he's gonna be um, an olb in in a three four yeah so, so um but uh but we'll see we'll see if that uh, gives him some time down there or if he makes it down there and Hopefully we get to see him up here at some point, but uh, that'd be pretty crazy. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's gonna be great. The fact that we have already uh, a, an outstanding rush end, yes, uh, that's Canadian, is great. Um, they mentioned Gabriel Bagnell. Uh, they talked about Marshall. Uh, one guy they haven't talked about is someone whose rights we do own, and that's Stefan Charles, who yes. now is available, who was in the AAF. Mm-hmm. And that recently has allowed them to come up north and sign with the ZFL. So if he decides he wants to keep playing football and wants to come up here, we have his rights as well. So a lot of flexibility. Well, I was told, though, Charles is playing a little more tackle now. He than, is a tackle. Yeah, than defensive end. Especially but, but in the It does Canada. give you the, f- the flexibility. Right, they sure. could do some rotating. The same with Mackey. Yeah. Mackey played a lot more inside than he did outside last yeah. year. So. Milk truck. Mm-hmm. Exactly. There you go. All right. Mm-hmm. Um all right, let's get to our second pick, uh, which is 12th overall. Uh, now we step into the offensive line pool. Now, this was one I did not see coming. Right. Uh, picking uh, Kyle Saxlid. Now, 6'7", 290 pounds, so he fits in with the rest of the boys. Mm-hmm. He'll, He'll be pretty light for the rest of them. Uh, well, he's light, but he's the same height. Yes. Yeah, they're all these small trees that are stand out there. Now, <laughs> this is one of those guys that's um, like an American-Canadian so right. grew up in in the States, played football in the States, did all that, happened to mention that his mom was Canadian to somebody. <laughs> They're like, you should be in the draft. Yeah. And, ta-da! <laughs> um, but uh, he did actually come to watch uh, the Esks camp in Vegas at mm-hmm. one point because he played at uh, UNLV. Yep. And, uh, and then he... Uh, and then I guess he attended a couple of riders camps and then was at the 
the combine this year. So, mm. um, very interesting dude. Um, very uh, obviously tall, and he's been playing in uh, indoor leagues. So, yeah. natural um, tackle. Yep, and an actual tackle, which uh, yeah, Canadian tackle that could be very interesting. Yeah, yeah, uh, he could back up Maddie. And then we could have like well, Matt's going to play at the right guard spot probably. But, but yeah. I mean, if we had other, like maybe Quabina needs to be in the guard spot, there you and go. Maddie yeah. could be on that. Maybe yeah, or if we can get Justin would, Senior up. Would would any of us complain if the line was Servi, Bond, Beard, Quabina, and O'Donnell? I would be quite all right. That'd with be that. all right. Yeah, yeah. or Not again, alive. Justin Senior comes up. Sure, I'd, throw him in the right tackle I'd spot. Be fine with that too. Yeah, and now we have a backup. There you go. Perfect. So uh, we did get to talk to him on the phone right after he got picked. Uh, so here's what, when we asked, uh, how are you feeling right about now? Uh, right now, I'm excited as can be. And I'm just glad I have a team that I, and I know where I'm going. Yeah, no, no kidding. What, what was it like just kind of waiting, waiting through the, uh, the first round and, and seeing some picks go and things like that? Uh, you know, I, I, had, I, had, I had, you know, I always think high, highly of myself. And uh, so did my agent, and we were hoping for, you know, a higher pick, but at the end of the day, I'm just excited to be on a team and knowing that in, you know, two weeks, I'll be playing football again. Right, right. What, what, what was the whole process like? I understand you're at, at the, uh, the Combine and everything. What, what was it uh, like just getting oriented with, uh, with everything Canadian football here? Um, you know, it's there, there are some you know definite tra- uh, differences between you know American and Canadian football. You know, obviously the three downs, the yard off the line stuff that you know means a lot to me. It's definitely it's also faster than American football, but I got used to that playing some indoor ball because they have a twenty five second play clock, and so stuff like you know I'm just slowly preparing myself for things like that. But at the end of the day, you know, I I, I feel like I'm a fast learner, and I, once I get into camp, and start playing against some guys, going on that yard line there, I won't have any trouble with that. And uh, the third down just means that there's more pass protection, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, you know, it's just it, it, the place that my play style per se won't have to change too much. It's just you know, the knowledge of what's going on around me. You know, for, for sure, for sure. And and you're back under the open sky, right? I mean, that's uh, the way football is back meant to be. The, yeah, yeah, that'll be nice. You know, I'll actually be able to see some sun, maybe some rain, snow when I'm playing. That'll be nice. And and, and a few more. Yeah. <laughs> Should have been here yesterday. <laughs> Uh, a few more guys next to you on the O line as well, right? I mean, it's uh, got got to be different from what you were doing last uh, last year here. It was, it's definitely different because uh, you know in the indoor game, there's only three of us down there, so there's no real you know scheme wise to play O line. It's just like, well, you block the guy ahead of you. Um, it'll be nice to get back into that where you're having to like look at these schemes and everything. I love that part of the game, uh, making checks, making calls. Uh, you know, post games, things like that. Uh, it'll, it's just, it'll, it'll be nice to have that again. That's for sure. Maybe not exactly the way you, you saw your career uh, kind of getting getting off to a kickstart here after school, but uh, I mean, things got to be looking up now, hey? Uh, they definitely are. You know, I, I, when I first got into football, I wasn't really ever expecting anything. I was, you know, doing it just because I thought it was fun and things like that. And then, you know, everything after the fact was just, oh, I have a chance to go to college on this and get a college education. That's amazing. And then I. You know, I was going through college and everything, and then there were rumors, you know, words like, hey, you know, there's a, you know, potentially you could go to play professional football with this, you know, NFL, CFL, or anything like that. And I was like, you know, I always just take it, you know, that, that, that's a great opportunity. And right now with the, C, with, uh, with the CFL, I'm just super excited uh, that this is where my career is at the, at the moment. How do, how do you look in the colors green and gold? I think I'm going to look great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> I love how we, I love how he ended that. I'm gonna look great. Of course. Like very it's, slimming. It's gonna be outstanding. Yeah. yeah. Um and uh, I do wanna say thanks to uh Dave and Jerry and Morley for throwing the questions out there and, and letting us uh grab a bit of that. So uh, it sounds like a, a good dude and, and one thing that Brock said after the fact was that he he chased football. He yep. he wants to be there. He mm-hmm. came to them and said, uh, you know, what what does it take to get on here? And and is really passionate about playing the game. And that's the kind of guys they were looking for. Yep. So kind of you can hear that passion too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. That, that, that's a good thing. So I'll round out the the other picks here really quickly. Uh, so round four, we picked a fullback, Peter Sender, and a fullback at six four two twenty. Um, 
maybe tight end. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be like Alexandre Dupuis, right? Absolutely. But yeah, big, big dude. Uh, then in round five, we did uh, wide receiver Shy Ross, six feet, 180 pounds, who is actually the half brother of Alex Taylor. Right. Which is kind of cool. So a little bit of brotherly love on the team. But uh, I guess he really stood out at the Western Combine that was here in Edmonton, and then he earned that spot to the full Combine. So, right. Uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, defensive line uh, in the fifth round we picked Evan Machibroda so 6'3 280 uh, from what I hear he's likely going back to school this year but yeah. he could join engineering next year. I think I believe so yes well, I um, think you know we had 40 and 41 this year and last year we did pretty well with number 41 or yeah, two years ago yeah we did alright yeah, so uh, yeah mm-hmm. so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take that uh, round 6 50th overall defensive back Scott Hutter now he's 6 foot 185 pounds uh, he's teammate of Quake who's from Wilfrid Laurier, so he gave him a big, uh, 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 what do you call that, a pat on the back on being a good, uh, good guy in the locker room as well, so so that's good to have. Uh, round 7, uh, 59th overall wide receiver Hunter Carl. He's a skinnier guy. Yeah, 6'1", 165. I'm like, whoa, holy. <laughs> I got a leg that's 165. <laughs> that's a, I, I actually make him look small. That's weird. That doesn't happen with football players usually, uh, unless their name is Nate Bahar. But anyway, you're welcome to Kobina for that. And uh, round 8, 68th overall defensive back Eric Blake. Uh, six one two ten uh, from McMaster. So uh, again, might have to uh, wait a little bit on these guys, but that, they're looking more kind of uh, special teamers type idea. Uh, Brock was really happy after the draft, like I said, um, and uh, he said there like again a couple that are worth waiting for. But it, when we have good Canadian talent, it's not the end of the world for us to wait. No, he's always done best player available. Um, I was looking at some of the drafts we've done over the years and. It, we started off really badly. Absolutely, I think for the like in the fifties, we didn't ever sign a single person we drafted. <laughs> wow. um, they never made it. We were at a pretty stacked team, right? So, uh, you don't say. Yeah, once you got in the sixties, it was kind of up and down. Like one or two guys that were more role players, and then um, it wasn't until I think sixty nine we got Cutler. But it was really up only my brother. Yeah, Sorry. we had uh, a few, and it wasn't really until the two thousand tens we're starting to see all of these draft picks making the team and really only one or two not making the team. Yeah. And that's um, a trend I'm hoping we're going to see continue. Yeah, I hope so too. I hope we see, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, other than the guys that are obviously going back to school. No, I mean, eventually, eventually like Tavon yeah. Smith didn't make the team his first, like when he was right. drafted because he didn't come to the CFL, but now he's finally here and that kind of thing. So, yeah, absolutely. So even if we have guys like Betts, maybe he isn't going to be here this year, but eventually making the team. Absolutely. Yeah. And, well, and guys like you already mentioned, the guys like Justin Senior and Stefan right. Charles and these types of things, if they end up back here, well... That, that could pay off. That's, that's not a bad, that's a good no, problem. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we'll really quickly go through some of the uh, team changes here, and then we'll uh, and then we'll take a break. Um, so a lot of releases coming as we get closer to camp. We talked a little bit beforehand. Uh, international linebacker Taylor Tank Reed uh, gone off the team. Bit of a surprise, no? No. No, I mean, once we got... Um end up getting Larry Dean on the team. I mean, he's going to be the middle linebacker. You think? There's just yeah. no way the guy that was the most outstanding defensive player for the East is not making the team. Um, so it just comes down to who's going to be cheaper. Is it Corey Jones at the middle linebacker spot, or is it going to be Tank Reed? So, yeah. Unfortunately, Corey knows the system that we've been running for a while. He knows all the players, so I think he'll probably be the guy that's there. Yeah. Quite likely. Uh, I'll just run down this list because most of these we may have only heard of in passing. We hardly knew ye. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All these cups of coffee that we had going on here. Uh, linebacker Caleb Bailey. Linebacker DJ Calhoun. Now that one, I, I remember watching that tape and him blowing guys up. Mm-hmm. I was kind of excited to see him hit somebody, but so that's unfortunate. Uh, DB Justin Gibbons. DL Evan Gill. DL James Hearns, uh, wide receiver Anthony Mahungu, oh, which we're is miss upsetting because we really wanted that name for the podcast. <laughs> um, defensive lineman Damani Mosby, mm-hmm. uh, offensive lineman Brandon Smith, defensive back Jalen Spencer, linebacker Vincent Schiffner, which we had only signed a week before. So Local we guy. actually yep. talked about him getting signed and then, and then was released. Um, now, retired, uh, signed one day uh, to retire as an ESC, is Simeon Rotier. Um, did you guys ever get a chance to talk to Simeon at all? Uh, we've seen him in passing. We never had a conversation with him, though. But, yeah, stand-up guy. It's, that's uh, yeah. another guy that we're happy to see 
uh, retires an Eskimo for sure. Yeah, very yeah. quiet dude. Yeah. Again, uh, fairly local. Sure. Westlock, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think or it was. Around yeah. Westlock area. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, defensive back Johnny Adams. So I, I have to think that that's got to be related to the injury. That was a couple of weeks ago, like three weeks ago, four yes, weeks ago. Yes, but it was right after we recorded last mm-hmm. time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's all timing. Um, national wide receiver Peter Berryman, who was a draft pick. Was that from last year or the year before? The year before, I think. I think it was the year before, yeah. And then offensive lineman Curtis Cron. Yeah, was he was in year. January. That was, yeah, that was, he retired. But it was last year. Yeah, so that we drafted him. Drafted him, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because I remember us Kron. sitting around the table all yelling Cron just because it was funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, now, we did also sign uh, international linebacker Vontae Diggs, uh, who is with Washington uh, in the NFL last year. So Yeah, but, uh, he had a great interview with uh, Dave Jamison on 1260. Oh, is that right? Uh, oh, talking about his okay. life. Uh, we'll have to retweet that. Um, okay. He was homeless at one point. Um, Mm -hmm. and just, you had some, there were some things at home and they had to go live in a car at one point or live on the street. So, uh, his brother and his mother and and him. So, uh, really touching story. So he's, he's a feel good kind of player. You can really get behind. Ooh, I see a future podcast. There we are. Mm -hmm. I also see somebody who might actually really enjoy pay it forward with football. There you go. There you go. See that? Absolutely. There'd be a good, a good one. Uh, so, so many moves, of course, as we are getting closer. Um, and, uh, that's going to be exciting as we get into this in a couple of weeks. Here's hoping. Uh, so let's take a really quick break and then we will come back with some more CFL news and a little bit more on pay it forward with football. This is Kabir Asari, and you guys are definitely listening to the Eskimo Empire Podcast. Enjoy. The Eskimo Empire Podcast is brought to you by United Construction Company. As a full-service commercial general contractor, United Construction Company serves large and small-scale commercial, light industrial, and multifamily residential construction projects across Western Canada. UCC is a relationship-focused builder forming a trust and respect that is at the forefront of their commitment to quality, value, and integrity. Visit their website at unitedconstruction.ca to find out more and support them as they support the Empire. Can join the empire online find us at eskempire.ca check out all the new blogs and then follow us on twitter facebook and instagram for more history follow at esks history on twitter and even more of my pics on esk empire photo don't forget to rate review and subscribe to help the pod grow thanks again for listening let's get back to the show all right we are back and uh we need to talk some cba we do. Who's excited? Yep. I'm excited for football. <laughs> crickets, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Insert crickets here. Um, so they met last week. Uh, no news yet. They are. They do have more. There's a Today, lot more. Today, tomorrow. Yeah. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week. And I believe Monday, Tuesday next week, or is it? Uh, up to the 15th. So up to be, the 15th. Yeah. So there are going to be a, a few more meetings. Tuesday, Wednesday, something like that. Uh, now, the players did hold a strike vote. Yes. Uh, and it was overwhelmingly yes. Um, 97%. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty... That's pretty overwhelmingly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I'm not sure on the labor laws in Alberta and Ontario and not showing up to camp. And that's... Mm. I, I'm... I mean... Yeah, let, let's talk legalese on the podcast. No, yes. I have no frigging clue. Yeah, Lionel Hutz. Like, yeah, yeah, that's, that, would, that would be better than what I could do yep. because I have no idea. Um, and uh, somebody was asking me, uh, Brittany was asking me, so what does that mean? I think I just sent back the shrug. Like, yeah. I, um, I don't know. know. We'll have to see what happens in the coming weeks. But again, if they're going to suspend someone for not attending camp, that really isn't too much no not not really no um i think the biggest thing here though is that there was on the line uh, did they call it the show and pass bonus is that what it was called i'm not sure uh that's the one where there are bonuses in contracts where they they show up to camp and pass their medical mm-hmm. and they get a bonus and there's a lot of a uh, bouncing around right now whether or not if they don't show up for camp is that bonus now gone 
Well, not paying bonuses as it is right now. So, I, but even still, like that's the thing is mm-hmm. like they were they said off season bonuses right were held. They didn't say anything about, I, and I believe they call them show and pass. I, somebody will correct me, I'm sure, but. Uh, Alanesky, probably. Probably, yeah, because that's, you know, that's <laughs> what the internet does, is correct people. Um, so, but I, I know there is, there's a lot in question as to whether or not, not only would it n- be, in, like, they're holding the bonuses right now yep. from the off season. Doesn't, once they sign, they could get those bonuses back. Right. But the show and pass, they're saying they may just not get it because mm-hmm. it's based on showing up to camp and passing your medical. So, It'll be interesting to see. I mean, it's another one of these things that we talked about before where it's just, I, I hate labor negotiations on so many levels. Mm-hmm. I, I, underst- I understand that you need to make it fair and all those types of things, but God, I hate all the posturing and, and uh, well, we're going to do this and, oh, well, then we're going to do this. Well, right. then I'm going to do... It's like fighting with a two-year-old. Like, yes. seriously. Why? What's that like? Yeah. <laughs> any any exactly insights like. on that? <laughs> like, you, you know, you say, well, you know, no, you can't have that candy. Well, I'm going to go over there and take it. Well, no, you're not. You're not having the candy. I'm well, going to ask I'm, mom. Well, yeah, <laughs> yes. exactly. Well, then I'm going to then I'm gonna take this and throw it on the ground. Well, then I'm going to take this away. It's just dumb. Like, I... I, I it drives me crazy and we all do it i know yeah um i'll give a little bit of credit to randy on the draft show when he just shut down the conversation yeah. <laughs> when farhan tried to ask him and farhan was probably like you know you knew i was gonna ask like right. you could have just told me yep. beforehand not to but it was anyway i thought it was uh i mean good that i guess they're not not too much of them are doing airing it all out in public right. but still it's like Come on, guys. Lock mm-hmm. the room and get it done. Yep. Yep. We want football. You think? Yes, please. Yes. Uh, now, let's get on to some positive things about the CFL, though. They did <laughs> announce their single game tickets and themes for this year. Did you guys hear about the themes? Tell us more. Yes. I am excited. Uh, the Thursday Night Concert Series is yep. back. So here it will be July 12th. Uh, <laughs> twift. <laughs> I can't is. wait for that day. <laughs> I can't wait for July twelfth. Does that come after three? <laughs> That's right, and eleventieth. Yeah. Sam's the tired one. Eleven I, I can't. That's contagious. I, I can't say anything. It's excellent cider. Um, July twenty fifth. I just Ooh, tried to put that it is all a together. Date. Twift. <laughs> the twift. Taylor Twift. Yes. Uh, that was when we were playing Toronto that night. <laughs> oh, is that what's happening? That's right. Yeah, exactly. On the twift, we play Toronto. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this. And the reason I am is because I, there was only one that I really liked last year, but I really liked them. And that was the beaches. Right. And I ended up getting that album and I love the That's whole album. album. It's yeah. really, really good. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I kind of like that they're doing these little concert series and you sure. get exposed to other bands that you wouldn't sure. normally yeah. see. And, and I, I kind of think it's a great idea. Um, and, and there's another reason to go to the game, right? Absolutely. So, um, yeah. so the, whoever wins on the twift is going to be amazing. That's going to be an exciting game. <laughs> yes. I'm never going to stop that. <laughs> so brutal. Anyway, um, they're also bringing back the, uh, family night game. Yeah. Um, or, guess, rematch. or family, family afternoon games, which sometimes it is. Uh, yes, for us, it's the Labor Day rematch. Um, so I, I really like those ones and and uh good probably for pay it forward with football because you Paw patrols are, yeah. there yeah exactly. they are yeah. so that's awesome gotta, <laughs> the kids will be going to that one chase will be on the case you got that right <laughs> <laughs> i love how we all know what you're talking about <laughs> that's sad but true sad. yeah i don't i don't know as much she said bubble guppies though i remember yeah. that one. oh yeah yeah it's gonna be like what happened on game of thrones no idea but did you see, see paw bubble patrol <laughs> did you see yeah the latest bubble guppies i, I don't I don't know, because see, every time somebody says that, all I can think about is the theme song. It just doesn't go away. No, it's like, a worm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, let's let's go with that. Um, now, the Grey Cup got a little bit of a makeover. Yes, it did. I need to ask what you think of that. I, I don't know. It almost looks a little more generic now. It had a mm. real, I thought, more personality the way it was. Mm-hmm. I understand why they're doing it because they're starting to run out of room mm-hmm. again, and, and mm-hmm. it, not only can make it bigger, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think it, it looks very uniform, very neat, very modern. Yes. Um, I don't know. It almost looks a little too much like uh, another 
any other trophy at this point. So okay. we'll see. I think it'll grow. I mean, on the me. top is still nice. Like yep. the, the top is still the original. And hey, you looks, can drink out of it. Try that with the Lombardi trophy. Yeah, you yes. can't do that. Absolutely. Right. So I, I don't mind it. Did you see the? Yeah, it, it looks pretty good. Like I, I, I agree with Mike. I think it it was something that needed to be done, but uh, it, it does look modern. And but you know. I guess the the meat and potatoes of it are still there, which yeah, is good, right? It's going to grow on me, I know, but yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, it needs to be dinged around a little bit, which is going to yeah, it will, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just give, give it, it the, about give it about eight months. Give yeah. it to the offensive lineman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I do think uh, I I don't know. Maybe I'll say I'm wrong, but it, when I first saw it, the first thing I thought of, oh, they're trying to match it a bit to the to the CFL logo. Like maybe. it, it kind of looked like that same the uniform. Same font, yeah. Same font look like that. That really kind of caught my attention. That may, so may maybe, have played into it. Maybe that was the whole idea of making it that way. But uh, but I, I thought it didn't look horrible. Like mm-hmm. it, yeah. it doesn't. It doesn't look bad. It just looks different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I agree. I, I love the character. So right, just throw it around a bit. I'll love it. Mm-hmm. There you go. Be awesome. Yeah, drag it behind a car. It'd be great. They <laughs> are going to take names off though. That's the thing that's going to change, right? So next year they're going to take the 1909 winning team off, and then oh, the year after that, okay. the 1910. So right, because they've got to start. Right, and then those right. will go at the Hall of Fame. Right. So. Okay. Well, at some, they can't just get, like guts just make it. Yeah. <laughs> it's about fourteen <laughs> feet around and <laughs> takes three guys just to pick it up. Look at that <laughs> trophy. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not exactly easy cart cart aroundable. That's fine. Yeah. I made that word up just like that's right. We got the keeper can just you know they can hire a couple extra guys. We <laughs> could do it. Yeah. I'm in. No. See, yeah, I could put white gloves on. Happy to help. <laughs> um, really? Now across the league, I only want to bring this up just because it was just a bigger name. But Lions making some big moves, releasing uh, Solomon Elamimian yep. and uh, Danny Vandervoort, who was such a high draft pick just a couple of years ago. Um, That's what happens when you sign a guy for seven hundred and twenty-five thousand a year. You yes. don't say. Yeah. So you mean and Suk Chung, when, and, yeah. when you sign a lot of guys, there are still some star players that need to go. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Hmm. All right then. Yeah, it was, it was interesting when they asked Ed Hervey about that. His uh, his comment was, "We're going to rob Peter to pay Mike." Yeah, and uh, so that, that's a <laughs> telling tale. Yeah. Right, that's very true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so uh, wow. that's what happens, right? And it wasn't me. No, it wasn't. <laughs> that's he a didn't shame. pay you. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, a few years ago, you'd want Ed to pay you. Now, eh, it's fine. He can still pay me. Oh, okay. Just out of, just for just for fun, right? Yeah. Oh, that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, the release of Solly, though. What uh, What do you think? Where I know the leading candidate right now. There's two. Yeah, but the main one is the rectangle to the east. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what do you think? Where does Solly end up? I think he's got Saskatchewan uh, written all over him. I mean, Saskatchewan's notorious for taking these guys that are you know. Getting towards the end of it, and uh, Jerry Simon, for yes, example. absolutely right. So I think I think he'll fit in good there. I, he's, he's probably still got a you know two or three good years. I think he's thirty three, thirty four, somewhere in there. Yeah, somewhere uh, in that range. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but he does have a lot of miles on him too, right? So he's uh, he, he doesn't play the position quietly. So no, he doesn't. That, that, that absolutely play, plays a toll as well, right? Absolutely, and just coming off the injury as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for another sure. injury. That's mm-hmm. the other thing you got to keep in mind. Right. So. Mike, are you in agreement, or do you think... Yeah, I mean, really, it's between Saskatchewan and Hamilton, and I think Saskatchewan has the edge there because they're going to pay what they're going to pay. I mean, Hamilton did lose Larry Dean, so... Yep, sure mm-hmm. did. Which worked out well for us. So yep. uh, they definitely have a hole there. Um, I think it's going to be one of the two of them. Historically, Saskatchewan is going to want to make a big splash, so mm-hmm. I think that's where he's going to end up. Uh, I hope he still has a good career, except when he plays us. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but that's I why I was hoping he'd end up in Hamilton because then easier to cheer don't, for. Don't, don't, yeah, exactly. Then too, I yeah. can then I can cheer for him and it'd be okay. Right. Yeah. But oh god, don't go to the rectangle. Yeah. Don't do that. Or the triangle, as we called it last week, just for fun. Because <laughs> Bermuda rectangle. That's right. Yeah. Well, I like that too. That, like, like or that like. I mean, it's a T-shirt. Oh, come on, man. Anyway, all right. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens now. Uh, as of course, we are getting close. Uh, prediction season has started. Oh, it's always so much fun to do this. Um, I do want to <laughs> say thanks to uh, Daltz from Rouge Radio because he had me on last week to uh, co-host and talk Eskimos. Um, but I had to come up with a record and a reason for the record that I was giving to the Eskimos. 
Now, uh, I said I gave them a nine and nine record this year. Same as last year. Same as last year. Yeah. I can fill in my details afterwards because I don't want to sway any of your thoughts on what you might think about where, if you had to pick a record. This is pre training camp. I don't, I'm going to pick again once we get closer to the season and I oh, actually get to see what they actually do. But I, well, I'll stick with it because it's fun. That's true. Oh, I'm sticking with it. 18 and 0 in a great game. I was just going to say. Yeah, that's, ex- <laughs> that's, that's my <laughs> prediction. That's, that's, is that yours? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Okay. 18 and 0, great game. All right. Um, but. What would you What would you start with, uh, Sam? Did you, how do you think they'll do this year? Do you think they're going to be any better than last year? Do you think they'll be the same? Do you think they'll do worse? Um, I'm going to say better. All Good. right. Yeah. How much better? They were nine and nine last year. One more win. Two more wins. Let's go with two. Oh, 11 and 7. All right. I like it. I don't mind that at all. Nope, don't mind that at all. Uh, why would you say that? Why would you say Why do you think? And I'm not just saying you're wrong. I'm just saying, why would you go with that? Because we're saying Andrew's wrong. <laughs> yes. You might as well join the crowd. <laughs> Everyone calls me wrong. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Just staying positive. That's Good. Right. Yeah. All right. Good job. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Quentin, where do you see him? That's a tough one. Um, in terms of team, you know, I'm not 100% familiar with the schedule. Which Western Division teams are they playing three times? Um, I can tell you. Know, you. Hold, please. That's going to make a difference. Well, they're playing Calgary three times. Three times Calgary, for sure, right? Yeah. And then... Uh, and they play, yeah, they play Calgary three times and BC three times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that <laughs> that's, that's I was hoping you're going to say Saskatchewan, but uh, uh, no, we only play Saskatchewan twice, right. and it's a back-to-back at the end of the season, yep. which I still don't understand. That's bizarre to me. Nope, but that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think I'm going to go with Sam as well. I'm, I'm going to say 11 and seven. I think we're going to, you know, there's a couple of games last year that we lost that we should have won, mm-hmm. and um, you know, with a little bit more solidification on defense, I think we win those games. So I like 11 and seven. All right then, yeah. super fan. Eighteen and zero and a great cup. <laughs> <laughs> I also say I, I asked yeah. super fan. Oh. I did not ask podcast Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd say zero and eighteen if it was podcast that, well, Ryan. That, that's true. Yes, we were um, talking about. Yes, I, I agree. With, no, he with, would only give that one to Saskatchewan. That's true. <laughs> he'd give me two that, and six. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with with Sam and Quentin. I think it, we're going to see some improvement. I think it's going to be probably up and down for the first half of the season and mm-hmm. I think we're going to start rounding into form as the season goes on um, we've got to get used to a new defensive coordinator a new scheme uh, a new style of defense entirely and plus get some of these guys used to playing with each other because we've got them from so many different teams and a lot of people like to say that Brock just gets the old band back together from Ottawa but yeah. when you see guys from Hamilton guys from Winnipeg guys from Calgary guys from BC exactly yeah. Yeah. we're going to see a lot of changes so I think it'll be a slow start it's certainly the first third, anyway, the first six games of the season, and I think we're going to start doing better. So I'll say, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll go with uh, 12 and 6. Ooh, mm. wow. I think it's going to be a good, strong finish. I think uh, if you look at quarterbacks before they went into a Jason Moss system and after, their stats yes. are always much better. Mm-hmm. Um, if you looked at um, Trevor Harris last year, he was about 400 yards behind Riley, but he did not play in one game more than Riley didn't. So mm-hmm. um, if you took his average, he'd maybe be about 50 yards behind Riley for the entire season. Right. So I think that his numbers could improve and, and maybe even be the top quarterback this year. So mm-hmm. Wow, that's uh, that's some high praise right yeah. there. So I'll tell you now why I went 9-9, nine and because nine, I think the offense took a bit of a hit Yep, and the defense got better. But is our the, offensive line better? Uh, yes, I, I did say that the offensive line mm-hmm. would definitely be better with Sir V on the end. Yeah. Um, and we'll have to see about that right tackle spot and who starts there, right? Um, but I, I, I do think that'll be better. I think CJ Gable's going to get a lot more work this year sure because Trevor like Harris does not run like Mike Har- Mike Riley. Mike Harris. Good <laughs> lord. <laughs> Speaking of politics, yeah. Mike <laughs> Riley. Uh, he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't run as much. So I, I do neither think that. Do, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, neither. <laughs> Mike, Mike Harris too. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't run. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't, doesn't run very much either. <laughs> Um, so I think the offense took a bit of a hit. I think the defense took a bit of a bump. Until I can see them play together and gel on the field, I'm going to say they end up about the same. That's right. And, 
I may have a different picture on that after I see training camp and see, sure. oh, maybe these guys will fit together properly. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I didn't want to put too much hope in it until you actually see it, just because of what you just said, where they're coming from so many different teams yep. and we're lacking a bit of that consistency other than really in the coaching except on the defensive side. Yeah, right? I sort of saw so. them two and four, three and three in the first six, and then mm-hmm. as it gets on, it's going to be stronger. So, And and that's what Daltz was saying is the, the problem is is that we come if we come out of the gate with a, with a one and three record – um, three of those, uh, three of those losses are going to be against teams that we're chasing, and West two, yeah. two BC and one Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. And in the West, that could really put you in a hole. So yeah. that's where I'm a little. I mean, playing Calgary and BC three times, it's like, oh man, like that's uh, mm-hmm. we got to play against Riley three times. <laughs> like you know, uh, twice is enough. Yeah. Like just rub it in, damn CFL. Yeah. What the hell. <laughs> anyway, um, all right, so anyway, that it's always going to be fun. I love doing picks, and we'll do a whole prediction episode at, right before the season starts, and when we do the uh, the night before football. Um, and don't forget to get your pickums in as well. Get them all lined up so that we're ready to roll with that, because that will start, of course, uh, that first week, assuming we are playing football. We were going to be playing football. Okay, thank you. Feel it. Eighteen and zero and a great cup. and a great cup, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Uh, all right, well, thank you guys for coming down. Uh, let's plug again. Uh, pay it forward with football. Where does everybody go to nominate someone, and what are the things that they need to worry about for nomination? Yeah, so you can find us on Facebook. Uh, our Facebook page is Pay It Forward with Football. Uh, nominations are made on, on the direct message button that's on the front of that page. You can nominate anybody you choose. Uh, the reason is entirely up to you. Uh, so it doesn't much matter as, as to the why. It's, it's We want to get as many nominations out there. Uh, if you're able to help spread the word on Twitter, Instagram, uh, sharing our page, things like that, just to get in front of as many eyeballs as we can, we really want to get, uh, you know, we really want to generate something that's big and that, that people can really um, sort of hitch their wagon to. So uh, you can find us on, on Facebook with that for sure. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. And uh, where do we find you guys if we just want to find you guys and chat with you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at, Q, at Q Ebert. So Q E B E R T Z. And Sam, your Twitter is. I S-E-Berts. think it's at Samantha underscore Eberts. Yeah, and you can follow us there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds now, fair. Now, to be fair, I will find what it actually is and put it out because you're tired. That's fine. Okay. I'll put it out on the Twift. Okay. Put it on the Twift, yeah. <laughs> Super you, should, you really need to copyright that word. I really do. Yeah. Uh, you can find me at 56 Parkies on the uh, the Twitters and Facebook. Yeah. I'm just not on that. That's uh, you're never on that. <laughs> that would be a lie. That but, would uh, be a complete uh, right, lie. That's a complete lie. Uh, <laughs> and of course, you can find me at Free Pelicious in the show at Esk Empire Pod. Uh, thank you, of course, always to our sponsor, United Construction Company. Check out their website at unitedconstruction.ca. You down with UCC? Yeah, you know me. Lovely. Uh, and of course, make sure you find us on all of our social channels on EskEmpire.ca. Uh, we're back in two yeeks. Two, Try that again. Two yeeks on the twist. On the twist. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. Oh God, is it the twist? That would be that. <laughs> okay. We will be back in two weeks, uh, which hopefully should be to the second day of camp. We're hoping. God, I hope so because yeah. I want to talk some real football. I got a Jimmy Gaines award out there. Absolutely, gotta have that. Yeah. So, uh, are we ready to see these new guys though out on the field? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, for Quentin, Sam, Pay It Forward with Football, Commissioner Kayla, and Superfan Mike, I'm Andrew. Remember, you can't catch footballs with your face, and we will absolutely see you in two weeks, unless you're at the Strule wedding this weekend, and I will see you in a few days. Woohoo! Thanks for listening. Find more great shows like this at CF Pod Network on Twitter. 